much for joining me. I love to upcycle. It's really my passion. I sold for many years, but now I'm just doing DIYs here on YouTube. And this is a fun look that I've sold many times. I create these fun little critters and characters, kitties, things like that, and put them on a flannel shirt, a jean jacket. I've put them on jeans, pillows, whatever. They're kind of fun. I'll have a little slideshow at the end of this video so you can get some ideas of what you can do if you're interested of what I've done over the years. Um, also, if you go to like Pinterest and search monster dolls, you can get some inspiration there. Um, yeah, so we're bleaching, patching, doing some lettering, all kinds of fun stuff. Let's get rolling. Okay, so this is the flannel shirt I'm going to be using. It's a men's 3X. I think it looks a little small for a men's 3X, but it's 100% cotton, and it has a little bit of a larger plaid pattern. I like the larger the better for me. So I did a little test with a Q-tip and some bleach underneath somewhere. Oh, just to see what it would do when I bleach it, because I don't want to talk about all this and go to bleach it and it doesn't bleach because sometimes they don't. So if you're going to do a lot of work before you bleach your flannel shirt, you might want to test it to see if it'll bleach first before you go to all that trouble. So let's go bleach it. Okay, I have my flannel just on my island. You might want to protect your area a little better or do it in your bathtub, something like that. Or if you live in nice weather, do it outside. But what I'm going to do is I have some rubber gloves and just a bowl and some pure bleach. And I am just going to pour a little bit here into my bowl. And I am going to take a rag. Mine is just made from a t-shirt, cut from a t-shirt. And I'm just going to saturate that pretty good in my bowl. Now, you can put... Um, cardboard or garbage bag in between your layers but I am not really caring on this shirt if it creeps over to the opposite side and seeps through so I am just going to take my rag and this is where I'm going to have my character so I want to bleach this area pretty good so that my character really stands out so I am just going to dip this rag and the bleach and I am going to get the back really good see this is already starting to turn colors and when I am uh when I get this how I want it I'm going to take it to my laundry room sink and I am just going to rinse it really really good you know a lot of people say don't use pure bleach but I do and I'm just sure to rinse it super good and for quite a while when I'm done. So now I'm turning it. I want, this is the front of the shirt. Here's the pocket. I want to do kind of a area right above that pocket, kind of solid. And then, so this is where I just did it. Now here's the other side, here are the buttons. I'm going down towards the bottom. I'm doing this kind of fast because I don't want the bleach on the back to just sit there too long and destroy my fabric. So now I'm just doing kind of a glob here. And now what I'll do is I'll set my rag aside. See, there's what the back is starting to look like. And I am just going to kind of splash bleach all over. So I want kind of those solid areas, but then I want to tie the rest of this in with those areas I just bleached. Just a little bleach here and there. I like that it's kind of turning brown. That makes the flannel pretty versatile. You can wear black shoes, black boots, brown. It may not end up brown, but we will see. Okay, now I'm going to let that set on there until these splashes 
are bleached. And I'll come back and it's only going to take a few minutes. Okay, I'll let that sit on there a bit and I will rinse it. And then when I'm done rinsing it, I will wash it in my washer on a regular cycle and throw it in the dryer. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is make a pattern for my character. And I'm just using a piece of packing paper, newspaper, wrapping paper, great for patterns. And mine is 12 and a half across, 12 and a half inches, and 18 and a half inches tall. That's just the basic proportion that I know I'll want my doll to be, or character, whatever you want to call it, monster. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I sketched my character out in pencil, and sorry I don't have a printable pattern or something. This is where your own creativity needs to kick in. <laughs> so, but I'll tell you basically what I did. So I had that piece of paper that I cut out, and then I fold down the center. That just helps me keep things balanced. And then I drew first. It's sort of a squarish peanut shape like this i'm kind of just tracing the the pencil that i already sketched this out with okay so she's kind of a peanut shape but a little squared off on the ends and then i did an arm over here and I wanted this one to be long and then I did an arm over here and I wanted this one to be short and then I just drew two little short legs one could be longer than the other mine are pretty close and I kind of pointed them in a little bit at the toe I think that looks sweet okay and now what I'm going to do is We'll be cutting these parts off, but we need it intact for the first step. So I am going to cut this out around the arms and the legs and the whole body. Okay, so here's what my little lady is looking like right now. And what I want to do is trace her onto a piece of cotton fabric. Now this is just a bed sheet. You can use any thin cotton fabric. I would stay away from anything stretchy. That's why I like cotton is just so easy to work with. And I am just going to trace around her. And you can stick some straight pins in here to keep her in place if you like. I'm just going to wing it. So I'm just tracing around the outside of the entire body. I'm using a black marker. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, I'll get that traced and I'll come back. Now I have it all traced and I'm just going to cut it out. So now I have this piece of fabric all cut out. And now what I want to do is go back to my pattern and I am going to cut these little legs off. And then I am going to put an L for left and an R for right. That way I know this is the top and which leg it is. And then I'm going to, I can do that with the arms too, although I think I'll remember because they're so different. So right, left, I'm going to cut those off. Okay, so now we have these little pattern pieces. And now what I want to do is I want to distinguish the head and the body. So about six inches down, I'm just going to make a little straight line and cut that. 
Now I have my pattern pieces for my little lady. So now I want to create my little lady and I'm going to start with her head and I am going to use this fabric. This is a curtain that I thrifted and I got it because I loved these tassels but this also looked like a nice quality fabric. Now this has texture in it and when I do like the heads of these little critters I like having texture. I don't want it anything just like a solid tan cotton or I like to have a lot of interest so I am just going to set this on top and trace around it you see my hand <laughs> I'm okay this is just from I visited my son over the weekend at his apartment and he has a new little kitty that's very playful. Okay, and now I'll just cut that out. Okay, so I got this cut out. And you can use chalk or something that disappears in the washer when you wash it. If you are worried about the marks around these pieces, I don't really sweat that kind of stuff. So... There's the head, and here's my fabric piece. I will just set that where the head goes and just take some pins and pin that on. I've learned from doing this that it's easier if you just sort of pin on a couple pieces at a time and stitch them on. These will all be stitched. If you try to do it all at once, it gets kind of confusing and a little difficult to manage at the sewing machine. So. I am just going to finish pinning that on and then I will do the fabric for the body. This is a really fun way to use up all those scraps that you have from other projects. So this is a shirt that I've used on another project. I think I cut patches out of it. I'm going to take the body now. And this is the top of my body. And I want this section here, and I really like these flowers. So I'm going to turn my body upside down to be sure I get those flowers towards the top because down here there will be patches. So I want to make sure that I see those flowers. So I'm going to put it about there and trace around it and cut it out just like we did the head. So here's my body, and I'm just going to lay that where the body goes. And then I will pin this on. And when I get this one all pinned on, I'm going to go ahead and sew these two pieces on. And all I'll do is use a fairly small straight stitch. I'm going to use gold thread because it kind of coordinates nicely with all the fabrics I'm using. And I'm just going to stay close to the edge, as close as I can, and go around this piece. And the same here, very simple. So now I just want to make the rest of her limbs and I'm using this little, it's kind of like a little corduroy, small floral fabric I'm going to use for this arm. And then I'm going to use this sort of velvety tapestry. This was from like a blazer or something. And I'm going to use that for both feet. And then I'm going to use this striped sort of vintage orange fabric <laughs> for the long arm. And I just want to show you quick, so I don't want to draw on this side because it's very textural and it will be hard to write on. This is actually the, the right, the top of the arm, the right side of the arm. So I'm going to turn it over and trace it on the back side. So remember if you do that, if you trace on the back side, Flip your pattern over. I learned this the hard way. <laughs> so flip your pattern over as well if you're flipping your pattern, your fabric over to trace. 
So I'll just get all these pieces traced and cut and pinned on and come back. Okay, so now I have her arms and legs all pinned on. I'm going to go sew it just like I did the head and the body. Just a small straight stitch all the way around each piece. That's what it's looking like on the back. Isn't it cute already? And we haven't even done the fun stuff yet. So now I want to add like some fun little patches and things. So here's my scrap pile. I've been kind of digging through here and picking pieces out that I want. And so what I've decided to do, I'll show you. I'll put the camera lower so you can see. Now I want to add just like some patches, some detail. And I have this little, this was a piece of decorator fabric and I cut that out in a rectangle. I wanted to just kind of go over this line a little bit this way and then in between the arms. And this is about two inches tall. So I'll pin that down. I wanted kind of a stripe and that was as close as I really had to a stripe but that works. So, and then the next thing I did was cut out kind of a reddish. This is just, I have a couple fabrics like this polka dot one and this one that I had when I did, made masks, a bunch of masks back in the day. So I want that about right there. All these I'll pin down better, but I don't want to take, I don't want to bore you with watching me pin everything perfectly. And this one is about two and a half by three and a quarter. And then I have this is actually from a quilt lap blanket. And I think it was really old. And I'll put that there. Okay. So now I have this like little plaid looking piece that was also from that quilt. I'll put that about right there. And this lace piece, it's like a burgundy lace from a top. Put that there and just a little polka dot piece there. The polka dot is two and a half by three. This green plaid is almost three by 2.75. And the lace is two and a quarter by about two and a quarter. But you do whatever you want. You don't have to use those measurements. Maybe you want it bigger. Maybe you have a really cool patch that you really want noticed. Make it bigger. Okay, so I'll get all those pinned on. And then I'm going to go back to my machine. And still using my gold colored thread, not gold metallic. I will just sew all these on with a fairly small straight stitch. And just try to stay fairly close to the edges. Okay, so I have all my little patch embellishments sewn on, except for one. And I'm going to do this little polka dot one a little bit different. So I took, I was using gold colored thread on everything, but I put white thread into my sewing machine and I put the stitch on a zigzag stitch Zigzag stitches have different lengths, and I'm using the widest zigzag stitch that I have. And I am just going to go over this, this patch. I'm going to go around and around until it just kind of looks messy. The first round, I will be sewing the patch on with the zigzag. So I'll go around like that, and then I'll just keep going around it until... It looks messy, maybe like three times. I'll go around once here and then I'll show you. So the second time I go around, I will go outside of that zigzag stitch. And then the next one, maybe I'll go inside or in between those two. I'll just feel it out as I go. Okay, I got one round done. Now I'm going to sew on the outside of the stitch I just made. It's just a fun little detail. 
Okay, I got round two done. And now I think I'm going to go in between those two zigzag stitches. There's a little bit of a gap. And this one will overlap those some. I want it to be kind of thick and full. Okay, I went around three times. And I think that looks really cute. I'm good with that. Okay, so now I want to work on the eyes and nose. And I just have a stash of vintage buttons here. And I picked out a green one for one eye. And then a black and a white one for the other eye. And I'll just layer them on top of one another. And I'll sew those together. They sew real easily together. And I like their eyes kind of wide set. And I already marked with a little black marker. Once I play with it and get it where I want it, I like to mark it with a black marker. That way I know exactly where I'm going to sew it. So those will be there. And I don't, you know, you can put the buttons backwards however you want. I haven't really decided how I want this one yet. But then for the nose, I'm just going to do a tiny little nose and I'm going to use kind of this orange bead and I'm going to put it about right there. But if you don't have any beads, you could also use like a tiny little pink button, something like that. Okay, I'm going to get these sewn on and I'll just be using my gold colored thread that I've been using throughout most of this. So now I have the eyes and the nose on and now I want to create the mouth and it will be with black zigzag stitching but I need to draw a guideline first and so I'm just taking a piece of chalk and from one side of the head to the other I am just drawing a fairly straight line but I want it to be a tiny bit crooked. So I already did that and now in the center I want it raised or a little bit wider. So I'm taking some chalk. That's actually not going to be the lips. The lips will be a starburst, but I just want it a little fuller there in the center with the black zigzag stitching. So I'll go to the machine and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so on my brother machine, this is the widest zigzag stitch, this four. That's what I typically use. But on this mouth, I'm going to the next one the second to the largest, which that's actually pretty small. So that's what I'm going to use for the zigzag stitch for the mouth. Okay, so I'm just going to put my little face in here and I'm going to follow that chalk line. I'm going forward and back to lock in that stitch and see where I made this little wide part i'm just going to go right down the center there i'm pretty much just making a straight line across okay so that's really cute but it's not dark enough. I, You know, if you're wearing this on a shirt, you might not be able to see that mouth from a distance. So if I go over it one more time with that zigzag stitch, it'll get darker. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, see that's better. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to set my zigzag stitch over here one down to a two 
and I am just going to fill in this little football shaped um, pattern there that I made. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, about right there. And I am just going to follow that outline and then I'm going to fill it in. Put my needle in to pivot this around. Kind of hard to see the phones in my way. Stick my needle in to pivot, see what I have here. Okay, so there's like a little gap right here. I'm going to try to fill that in. And I'm just going to go back and forth probably a couple more times. And then that should be about it. Okay, so I actually went over this four more times, four more times. And then I've decided I'm going, while it's set on two, I'm going to go over this line again. I really want that to be noticeable. Okay. And I'm happier with that. While I still have my black thread in, I'm going to set my zigzag back on four, the largest one. And right about here, I'm just making a little chalk mark. I think I'm going to go down and back, just like go over it two times, come down, and maybe I'll just even back stitch it. I don't know, make her look a little beat up. Okay. When I say make her look beat up, I don't mean by somebody. <laughs> I mean like she's an old doll that's just been loved and worn and beat up. That's what I meant by that. Okay. So now what I want to do is just create sort of a red starburst that will be her lips or her mouth. And I happen to have a black Sharpie. Otherwise, I would use like a pen. I wouldn't use a fat marker. And chalk is kind of fat. And these are going to be kind of fine. So as long as I'm using red, it if it shows, it's just going to look like part of the mouth. So... I'll use that and I'm just going to draw a line just straight down like that. Then I'm going to make kind of an X. I could have done the X first actually. And then I'll just draw a line straight across like that. And now I'm going to go set my zigzag stitch on the two, a fairly small zigzag stitch, and I will load my machine with red thread and create her mouth. I'll just follow those lines with the red zigzag stitch. Okay, so I decided not to use the zigzag on the mouth. I decided to use some embroidery thread, and I have one more little starburst piece to do here so I left that so I could show you that's what the back looks like so the needle I don't know the exact official size of it I have a stash of needles and a tin and I just grabbed one that I thought that the embroidery thread would go through and I doubled this like you would normally thread your needle with thread and put a knot at the bottom and so here, I'll bring you closer. Okay, and so when I did these starbursts, I did a whole row at once. I'm just doing this little piece here to show you, but when I did it this morning, I did a whole row at one time. Okay, so all I'm doing is just taking my needle, 
going underneath and I am going to find that point of that marker where I drew and just pull it through and then I'm just going to make put it back in just very close because I want these to be narrow at the tip and get wider as they go down so that will be the most narrow point and then now I am just going to go back underneath and just make little stitches as close to that as I have the patience for and then I am going to go back in a little bit wider and I'll just go a teeny bit wider as I go down towards the center of that starburst just keeping my stitches close together so they fill in nice and that's why I doubled my embroidery thread too because I want this to be nice and full and why not double it and save some work for yourself okay I'll get this finished up and then um, I'll show you what I did to one of the patches I just did some X's in white embroidery thread and I'll finish this row with you, but I'll get the mouth finished and come back. Now I'm just going to finish off the row of X's down at the bottom here. And I'll just go in from the underside. That's what it's looking like on the opposite side. And about right here, just, you know, a couple millimeters outside of the bottom of the patch, I'm going to stick my needle through. And then I'm going to cross it over like that. So I'm going to just pick a spot inside the patch so that my thread comes in at an angle like this and then I'll go back in underneath and I want to bring my needle up through about right here so I can finish off that X and like I always say these do not have to be perfect and you can see mine aren't exactly matching or anything like that and I don't want them to Let's see now I'm just coming in over here to complete that X and now I will go back underneath and bring my needle up about here to start the next X and I will just continue doing that until my row is finished Okay, almost done here. It's my last X, and I'll just turn it over. I am just not going to do any fancy knots. <laughs> this is very elementary. Just going to tie, take those two pieces of embroidery thread and tie a double knot. I usually go triple because I'm extra cautious about things staying where they need to be. Okay, okay, so she's almost done. I just want to do one more little thing before I sew her onto my flannel is I just want to give her a little bit of hair, some yarn hair. So I went to my yarn and I'm going to use red and black. I'm going to put black over here and red over here. So I am just going to take, this one's doubled, I'm just going to wind it around my hand a little bit, which I measured, that's about three inches. And I'm going to clip it at the top. And now I'm just going to hold it to my doll and see if I like that. Yeah, that's good. And so now I want to do black. 
I'm just going to do this, the same thing until I like it. I didn't even count how many times I went around. I just want a full little tuft of hair. And that will go here. I started them out three inches, but once I'm all done, if it flops over and covers the eyes, I can always trim it. So I am going to go to my sewing machine and I will just put her in the machine and I will do a zigzag stitch with my gold thread and put the needle in right here and just lay this down while I'm sitting there at the machine and just go over top of it and the same on this side. I kind of want it on the little corners of her head there. Okay. I'm going to grab my scissors here. Trim this up a little bit. Okay. Now I didn't catch all that yarn. I could go back and add it if I want to, but I kind of like it a little more wispy. I just think that looks a little more tattered. I half intentionally didn't sew all that yarn because I was undecided and when it didn't go through, I didn't sweat it because I thought I might not want that much. You just do as much or as little as you want. Maybe you don't want any hair at all. Okay, now I'm going to do the opposite side and I have this little pile. I'm going to remove a couple and sew that on just like I did the black side. Okay, I just want to show you something quick because at this point you can make a little doll out of this. When you create your pattern though, if you want to make a doll, now this is a very simple way to make a doll. There are other ways, but that would be a whole nother video and I'm just going to tell you quick because it's so easy. Before you cut the legs and arms off your pattern, trace it twice. You need it for to create her and then you need to flip it over onto another piece of fabric. I'm just using a vintage tablecloth. You can use chenille, tapestry, denim, whatever your heart desires, and cut that out. So when you're all finished, you could put these two pieces together and make your pattern larger, at least a quarter inch larger all the way around. That way you have seam allowance. And then you can just take your doll, put it on top, tuck that hair inside, and pin it all together. I'm not going to take the time because that's not what this video is about, but line it up real nice, pin it all together, leave about a three inch gap in the side when you pin it so that you don't sew over that because you'll need to stuff it. And maybe you have a pillow laying around your house with stuffing in it that you don't use. Cut it open and stuff your little doll. And I like to use on things like this, like the end of a wooden spoon to kind of shove that stuffing down in there. And then close up your hole when you're all done stuffing it. You can either do the stitching on the outside and have it tattered and kind of frayed edges, or you can tuck it in nicely and hand sew it or machine sew it. And then you'll have a cute little doll. Okay, on with the shirt. Now we're ready to put the little character onto the flannel. This is how the flannel turned out after it was washed and dried. Super cute. Okay, and now I'm just going to eyeball this 
try to find the center and I'll turn the camera off to do that because I'll stand back and I'll evaluate it and look at it. But I want it to be a if okay, I'm going to do the word smile up here and in, in remnants like sewing remnants and trims and lace and things like that. So I want her a little bit lower than I typically would put her. If I wasn't doing a word up here, I would put her pretty high, just like two or three inches below the collar. But since I'm doing lettering, I'm going to put her about right there. I'll temporarily stick a pin in here. Now I have a mannequin that I kind of gauge and look at her and pin it. You know, maybe you could hang your flannel shirt on a hanger and do that, or you could just lay it out on your table too. So what I'm going to do is make sure I have her where I want her and I'll probably stick in two more pins and then I'll lay the flannel shirt back out on my table and pin it all the way around. Take my time and do that. Okay. Now I have her all pinned on and I am just going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to use my largest zigzag stitch, my gold thread, and I will just follow her outline and get her completely stitched on. When I get to the hair, I'll just go over that stitch line that I already have on there, make sure her hair is up and get her sewn on. Okay, here she is all sewn on. And now I like how this black hair kind of drapes. It's off to the side, I can see her eye. Now this one's a little bit in front of the eye, so I'm just gonna give her a little bit of a haircut here and just trim some of that off. I'm gonna make sure you can see her cute little button eye. Okay, so now I want the word smile up here and I want it to be sort of curved and I am just free handing with a piece of chalk first my lettering and I know that this is almost impossible for you to see the chalk but I'll kind of show you how I have it shaped and you can always go to Google or Pinterest and type in whimsical letters or hippie lettering or funky lettering, you know, just to get some ideas if you're not sure what shape you want them. But my S starts here and it goes like this and I brought it all the way down to here. And then the M is smaller, it's right there and I have kind of a pointy M, but it won't end up pointy because I'm using a braid on that and that'll curve. Anyway, so the I, I just did a straight line like this and the L, I went like this and I'm bringing it down really far too. So it goes like this and then the E is just kind of like a backwards three and it's smaller than the L. I know that's not probably very helpful, but you know, there's no way I don't have stencils or anything like that. I wouldn't want to use those anyway. They'd be too perfect. Now, once I have it chalked out, and I do chalk because I can lick my finger and erase it if it's not right, I will go over it with my marker so that when I'm sewing all this on, the chalk might flake off and disappear, and I want to make sure it doesn't. So I will just go over everything with a marker. Okay, can you see that lettering here? Okay, now I'm going to sew my trims on to make the word smile. I will be sewing all of this on with my gold colored straight stitch. Now for the S I'm using, I just have a strip of old tattered blanket now, because this is so tattered, I will stay close to the edge and stitch this twice. Because if I went down the center, this could potentially just really fall apart. So, I will start, take this to my machine, and 
sew that following that S. And then when I get to the end, I'll just snip off what I don't want. And then I'm going to go back and do the opposite side, just so it stays together a little better. And then the M, I made this braid. Let's see. It's too long, and I'd rather it be too long. I'm measuring it for you. It's about 36 inches long, but I go big so that I don't run out. That's the worst. And I will do the same thing. I won't sew the knot because that's too tricky to get through the needle, but I'll start just where the braid starts. And I will only do one stitch down the center of this one. I don't need to do this one twice. And then when I get to the end, I'll have to clip it about down here, make another knot, and then finish stitching it. So S, M, and then I have this piece of trim, just kind of cool looking, and it will be my eye. And I will stitch this one twice because it's so wide, but I will put that there. I could probably cut that right now. Okay, I'll just, I'll probably just go all the way around this one. And then the L, I have this fun little bobble trim. And I will stitch that. I'll probably have the bobbles facing out. So that. Trim that where, when I'm done. And then I have this piece of lace. This lace doily. I love these flowers. That will go in my flower stash. But for right now, I'm just cutting out. I want it to be a little bit thin because my E is small. So I'm going to go about right there. And I'm cutting a little bit of the white. And I want all of that yellow. So I'll just trim this doily all the way around. Okay, so I have that trimmed. And... I'll make the E. How fun, right? Okay, now I'm going to go to my machine and get that all stitched on. Okay, so that's what it's looking like. Now I want to add some patches and then it'll be time to wash it. So. The patches will be the last thing I do, and I want to add a couple on the bottom in the back, and I want to add some patches where I bleached those heavier or solid areas right here. Okay. Okay, so now I went to sew on some patches, and a lot of these are just remnants from clothes that I have cut up for other projects and things like that. So. I have sort of a purple floral right here. That was from a shirt. And I am going to sew that right here. I'll pin all these on better. I just have one pin in them so I can show you. And this is six inches by four and a half inches. And down here, now this is a piece of quilt. This is the quilt I keep talking about. It was a little lap blanket. You can see I've got it all cut up, but I used a piece of that burgundy down here. It's five inches by approximately four. And these are kind of messy, so the measurements aren't exact. And then just a little, that little stripe again, that textured stripe, I'm going to put right there approximately. I'll go a little higher. Just sort of off center from the burgundy and above it. Uh, about two and a quarter inches by four. And then on the back, I'm doing another piece of that quilt. Only I'm using the plaid. It's kind of a greenish plaid. And I'm just putting it below, off center down here. 
and then this orange stripey again I'll put horizontally and I'll overlap this green one a little bit and so it about right there and then when I'm all done with this that oh, I had a little piece of lace Hold on one second. Uh, it's been on my shoulder this whole time. Okay. So once I get the patches sewn on, I'm going to take this dyed piece of vintage lace that I have from another project. And I am just going to sew it along the bottom, sort of like that. And I will overlap this burgundy patch probably about three quarters of the way. And then just make it sew it alongside of the flannel and I will use a straight stitch on all of this because when it frays a zigzag stitch kind of gets buried in the fraying so why bother right so you can use whatever you want but I'll just use a straight stitch go around all these patches and get the lace sewn on okay now I have the patches all sewn on and I'm going to do one more thing before I put it on and show you. I am going to cut this pocket off right here just to make it look more tattered and worn. So I'm just cutting the flap off and then inside the stitching, I just cut that pocket off. I'm cutting it just kind of crude. And then when it's washed, this will all fray too, and it'll look extra tattered. Okay, so here's what it looks like on. Oversized and fun. I would just wear it kind of like a jacket, you know. Let's see if you can get a good look at the monster. Okay, so to launder this, I would button it, turn it inside out, wash it on a gentle cycle, and either line dry or flat dry it. Thank you so much for watching.